Hi there. If you are entering a robot competition, your robot will need to turn. There are many different ways to do this. And in this video, I will show you how to program four different types of turn. Some turns use the gyro yaw sensor to give an accurate turning angle. Other turns calculate how much to move the robot's wheels for a given angle without using the yaw sensor. There is also the question of acceleration and deceleration to reduce the slip during a turn. I will look into spin turns where the robot spins about its midpoint and pivot turns where one wheel doesn't move during the turn. Also, turns with a larger turn radius for moving in a curved path. Which turn you use depends on what you're trying to do. Line following does not need the highest turn accuracy as the line follower will pull the robot onto the line after the turn. Finally, I will show a simple but effective your turn which uses only one program command. Okay, let's get started with turn number one which uses the Lego movement block. To look at what is happening during the turn, I will use the line graph feature with a broadcast command. The broadcast is started by the init my block when the program starts and defines which parameters are monitored. The your sensor shows which direction the robot is facing. The variable your target is not used by the turn my block, but shows what the direction should be after the turn. The variable MP is the motor power. The turn movement my block doesn't use the your sensor. It calculates how many degrees the motors have to turn, so that the robot turns by the required angle. Any wheel slippage will reduce the angle turn. I have used the Lego move block to implement spin turns and pivot turns on the left or right wheels. Three parameters are used. Speed of the turn from 0 to 100%. The angle to turn positive for clockwise, negative for anti-clockwise. And type S for a spin turn, R and L for pivot turns. The angle turned by the Lego move block relates directly to the motor. So we need to calculate how many degrees to turn the motor in order to turn the robot by the required angle. The distance between the robot's wheels is 16 centimeters. So with a spin turn, the robot travels in a circle with a 16 centimeter diameter. The wheel diameter is 5.6 centimeters. So we need to multiply the number of degrees to turn by its 16 divided by 5.6 which is 2.86. I found in practice that a value of 2.9 gives the best accuracy. For a pivot turn, a robot moves in a circle with radius 16 centimeters or diameter 32 centimeters. This gives a factor of 32 divided by 5.6 or 5.71. I found that 5.8 gives the best result. Okay, to try out the turn, I have made a program to make four 90 degree spin turns and end up where it started so we can check the angle for accuracy. The program moves forwards 20 centimeters and turns four times. Before the end, it saves the your sensor value in the variable your. Here we see that the error is minus three degrees. We could improve this by adjusting the factor in the turn my block. We are not using your sensor to turn, only to check the angle at the end. So factors such as the speed and how clean the wheels are will affect the accuracy. If we do the same for a pivot turn, we have a similar result. Let's look at the line graph in more detail. If we click here, it expands into the full screen version. The first thing to notice is the blue your sensor line. It moves nicely from zero at program start to 90 after the first turn and then to 180 after the second turn. It has a problem to stay at 180 as the your sensor flips between plus and minus 180. We see it increasing from minus 180 up to minus 90 after the third turn. The your target variable carries on increasing to 270 and 360 degrees. When using the your sensor, you have to avoid plus or minus 180 degrees. I'm working on a solution to this, which I will show in a later video. This problem does not affect the turn movement my block. So 180 degree turns are no problem. It is not completely accurate, but it is very useful for corners and junctions when line following. Next, we will look at a proportional turn. This uses the your sensor to give an accurate angle. 
The speed of the turn reduces as the yaw sensor value gets closer to the yaw target. You can use this turn in two ways to drive around using yaw. One way is to reset the yaw to zero before each turn and rotate the robot until the yaw sensor gets to the angle required. The other way is to keep the yaw setting at the beginning of the program and only reset it when it is possible to align the robot with a side wall. This is explained in detail in my video Don't Lose Your Yaw, which is in the playlist shown at the end. OK, let's have a look at the coding for the proportional turn. MPMIN sets the minimum speed for the turn, ANGLE sets the number of degrees to turn, MODE decides whether to keep the original yaw setting or to zero the yaw before turning. First, the difference between the yaw sensor and the yaw target is calculated and then multiplied by the gain factor KP turn to give the PID signal. This is used to drive the wheels in opposite directions for a spin turn. When the error is less than one degree, the turn is complete. When the turn is nearly complete, the speed cannot fall below MP min, which is adjusted to optimize the performance. The gain parameter KP turn is set in the init my block at the program start and influences the speed of the turn. A value of one gives good results. Now let's look at the turn in action. I will combine it with a your follower to move 20 centimeters between turns, but it could also be used with a line follower. Here is a quick look at the your follower, which follows the your target for a set distance at speed MP. First, Let's use the mode which sets the yaw to zero before turning. This program turns 45 degrees clockwise, then two turns of 90 degrees. Looking at the line graph, we see the purple yaw target line goes first to 45 degrees and then twice to 90 degrees. The blue yaw line moves up to the yaw target during the turn. With KP turn equal to one, the red speed curve follows the green error curve down to the MP min value of 15%, where it stays until the turn is completed. 50% is the speed during the yaw distance 20 centimeter moves. We have turned through 225 degrees in total. Now let's carry out the same sequence without resetting the yaw to zero before the turn. When the yaw sensor gets to 180 degrees, it flips to minus 180. We can't turn through the 180 degree point. I hope to have a solution to this soon. This turn is more accurate if we don't reset the yaw to zero. We have only the small error due to the basic gyro inaccuracy. If we set the yaw to zero before each turn, we accumulate errors due to not turning exactly the specified angle. The best idea is to only reset the yaw to zero for turns which pass through the 180 degree point. This turn is good to use when moving around with the gyro and only spin turns are required. OK, let's move on to turn number three, the universal turn. This uses the yaw sensor for accuracy and can do spin, pivot and large radius turns. It also uses acceleration and deceleration to minimize wheel slip. The parameter MP max sets the fast speed in the middle. MP min is the slow speed at the start and end. Angle sets the degrees to turn, plus for clockwise, minus for anticlockwise. Percent MP is the percent of the fast wheel speed, which is applied to the slow wheel. Minus 100% gives a spin turn, 0% gives a pivot turn. A value above zero gives a large radius turn. Parameter mode is Y for keeping the original yaw value, Z or Z for zeroing the yaw before the turn. This part of the my block calculates the motor speed MP during the turn. It increases from MP min up to MP max at the midpoint, then decreases down to MP min at the end. The last part of the my block drives the motors to carry out the turn. Now let's have a closer look at the robot doing a spin turn, a pivot turn, and a large radius turn. For each turn, we see the motor speed MP increasing from MP min up to MP max and back again. Between turns, the speed is set to 50%. The purple colored line shows the yaw target set to plus 90, minus 90, and again minus 90. The blue line shows the yaw sensor following the yaw target. 
The green line is the difference between the, your target and your sensor. Well, that was a universal turn, which can be used with line following or your following. The use of acceleration and deceleration should give a more accurate turn. The percent MP parameter is useful for positioning. Now, this is the turn I know you've been waiting for. The simple your turn. All we do is rudely change the your target between two your follow movements. Well, that doesn't look like much of a turn, although it produces a nice looking line graph. The KP gain factor in the your distance my block was optimized for your following. If we reduce it from 6.5 to 2.5, we get a very good turning performance. If we want to turn through the 180 degree point using this turn, we will have to set the yaw to zero before turning. This can be done by making a very simple my block with just one parameter for the angle. The program shown will turn 90 degrees clockwise four times. The line graph shows that even with setting the yaw to zero, the turn works very well. We can, of course, add the possibility to select with or without your zero before the turn as for the other turns. Well, that's all for now. I hope you found it useful. I was surprised how well the simple your turn worked. This table shows what the various turns can be used for. If you want information on optimizing a line or your follower, driving around with the gyro or dealing with junctions, there are videos in this playlist which could help you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.